we were a plugin for PhoneGap um, to, to read NFC from the Android device. Um, I'm Kevin and he's Dom, by the way. We both work for a company called Chariot Solutions. Um, so it was pretty a simple idea. We wrote some Android stuff um, natively and we decided how hard it would be to make an, a, a PhoneGap plugin to do it. And the answer was not very hard. So there is code, code samples and fragments throughout the presentation. All our demos and everything that we've done is available on my GitHub or Don's GitHub. And uh, the plugin source itself is at PhoneGap NFC. So what is NFC? So when I started this, I was absolutely positive that NFC stood for no fucking clue. Um, it wasn't until someone explained to me that it's near field communications that it really started to make sense. Uh, near, field, near field communications is a short range wireless technology. It, uh, it's a subset of RFID and it works over about three or four centimeters. I think it's got a theoret theoretical max of 10, but as you'll see throughout the demos, we never really get that far away. Um, the good thing about NFC is it is completely instant. There's instant contact and instant connection between you and the tag. And what's happening is the phone is producing an RF field, which provides power to read and write data from the tag. And essentially, that's all we're doing with NFC is reading and writing data from the tag. So we tried to put some forethought into how to write an API for this. Um, we looked at what other frameworks had done. And they'd sort of taken the, API, the Android API for NFC and said, here it is in Ruby, yay! Um, and we decided to try and make it a little bit easier to do than that. We took a look at um, the PhoneGap plugins, uh, PhoneGap core functionality that we'd used in previous projects and sort of identified that they're all pretty um, convenient, concise, and event-driven APIs. So we, we really tried to stick with that. All right, so that's it for slides. Um, the rest of our stuff will be demos. And we're going to start off by reading data from a tag, which is pretty simple. So we have, so we have, so we have a tag, to say standard NFC tag, which you've pre-populated with some data. Um, and what happens is we read the, oh, fail, wrong phone. All right, we'll be, we'll be right back. So it works much better when you use the right phone. So one of the things that we're going to demonstrate is what Google coined as a, um, Physical action with the virtual reaction, and it's a nice sort of um, uh, paradigm for NFC. So what happens is we have a tag, and we walk past, we scan the tag, and oh look, it's opened up Google Plus and says hello phone gap, and now I can post that to all my circles, which is way easier than scanning a QR code or doing anything like that. So at least we think it is. Do you want to? Was that with phone gap? That was with phone. Oh no, that wasn't with phone gap. That was just um, straight up NFC reading attack. Yes, we'll do. We'll do one with phone gap there. Right. Get excited. Oh, come on. So, all right. So we wrote. Um, so here's a tag populated with some data. Why did we do that? Or it is a chicken and the egg problem, and we actually wrote. Um, so we went through a stage of identifying how to get tags to activate through NFC and then through PhoneGap. And then we went through a series of how do I write data to the tags, and then how do I read data to the tag, or from the tags. Yep. Well, it's not on every tag. You'd have to write it to the tag. It's part of the end of. Yep. How do we get it to write? Well, as you'll see when we, Don will show you the demo writing code, but you can pass a, a, a arbitrary MIME type to a tag if you use the right TNF type, um, which is actually a good point, but we'll get to it when we, when we get further in. So, so that is the phone gap app. It just read a tag that says, hello, phone gap day, where's the beer? Mike failed before. OK. So um, how did we read that? We used our JavaScript API, which is fairly straightforward. Um, a couple things. When we initialize the app, the device ready is called. And so we're passing an on device ready function to that. And we're, um, our plugin registers itself as navigator.nfc. And we have this add mime type listener plugin. So we're telling it whenever there's a tag scanned with a mime type of text PG, call our read tag function. And then the success and fail. Uh, this, that's the success and fail for add mime type listener. 
Um, and our stuff is event-based. So then we have our read tag function, which gets an event. And uh, the event contains a tag object. The tag object contains an endef message object. The uh, tag object has metadata about the tag, tag type, tag size. Can it be right protected? Is it right protected? The uh, endef message is an uh, array of endef records. And so in this case, uh, we encoded the data as a string. So we basically just say, get the payload from the first record, convert it back to a string, log it to the console. So reading's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to show you how to write this next. All right, so we have a phone, another phone gap app we wrote, which is NFC Writer. And as you can see at the top there, we've got a little box where we can specify a MIME type that's really out of focus. Um, it says text slash PG, which is just a, an arbitrary MIME type that we use um, just to separate, us, separate our tags from everyone else's tags. There are standard formats, URLs, smart posters, plain text, which is supported by an end an specification, but we kind of hide all that. Um, so we've got some data that I want to write to a tag, so I'll put my tag down. Sorry. So then do 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 we get a little toast notification to say, hey, I've written you to a tag. And then to prove that I didn't make any of that up, I'll read the tag and it says, just says hello phone gap now and it's avoided all the hello beer. So one of the reasons we used our own MIME type there is we wanted the application to launch when the tag was scanned. So in the Android manifest, we set an intent filter that says you can set it for whenever an NDEF tag is scanned, but then you'd be in competition with a lot of different um, applications and you'd have menu chooser. Where if we say only look for our MIME type, open our application then, it lets us um, avoid that extra step for the user get, uh, you know, having to make another choice there. So uh, similar to what we did before, we, we uh, have an on-device ready. This time, instead of adding an NDEF MIME type listener, we actually add an NDEF listener. Because when we're writing to tags, we want to write to any tag that's NDEF formatable. When we get that event, we call our write tag method. And then our write tag method, we get an event because uh, if we needed to, we could, we could read what was actually on the tag first. In this case, we're not doing that. We're creating a new message with one element, and uh, we're using a helper method we have to create a text record, and we write hello phone gap into there. Once we have the message, we call our write tag method and pass the message in. One of the things, uh, messages can have multiple records, so uh, you can stack them up and pass a bunch of records in up to the size of what your tag is. Uh, we also provide a few helper methods to create text records, URI records, and MIME media records. You'll notice on that last one that we have to call bytes to string. <clears throat> and uh, because it, I think that's actually wrong. I should have called it string to bytes there. Um, because everything has to be bytes when it goes to the tag. Uh, the, some of the other helper methods do that. There's also a generic record method that lets you pass in constants if you want to do other things. Um, the idea is that we figure other people know what kind of data they're writing so they can write their own helpers to do that. They have more mics, or ones that work. Um, so our last, uh, our last part of the demo now is going to focus on the peer-to-peer -peer aspect of NFC, which is the bit that we like the most is kind of, you know, interacting with other devices or interacting with each other. Um, so I have a... So I have a contact. It's my contact details. Uh, this is another PhoneGap app. It's all, the, all these demos, all the source code for them is on GitHub, uh, actually on Don's GitHub. Um, so you can see that or not see that at the bottom here, there's a little button or a little checkbox which I'm going to tap and say, okay, now I'm sharing tags. So now I can share this information, this contact information with anyone who comes along. And if as long as I don't hit the home screen, we'll be fine. Um, so when I scan it with Don's device, don't. Um, it, uh, it's basically read, that read the tag from my phone and said, oh, look, now I can import Kevin Griffin's contacts and, oh, look, now he's, now he's added me to his address book, um, so that's pretty nice. So one of the things we hear a lot when we talk about some of the NFC stuff is that, oh, you know, I can walk along and I can scan Dave's credit card from across the room, you know, with, if he's got NFC en enabled on his device. And it's simply, 
because of the distances, a lot of that stuff's not true, but uh, when it comes down to sharing information, it really is down to sort of like the developer to enable and disable when you can be sharing information. So as long as you're sensible and say, oh look, now I'm not sharing my data with Don, nothing happens because nothing's enabled. So sharing, and, so sharing and sending arbitrary information is pretty easy. Um, a lot of the stuff we've heard around mobile payments is like, oh, you know, now I can turn my phone into a credit card. We think all that stuff's pretty lame because I don't know, Visa's going to do that and I'm not going to do that. So we decided to, oh, oh sorry, yeah, I skipped over that. I apologize. So uh, the, we have an API for sharing a tag. We're, we can use that same message we used before for writing to a tag, and it's very simple. It's just one call, share tag, and... Uh, when you call that, it uh, takes care of sharing the tag. If your application goes to the background, we will unshare it while you're in the background. And then when you come forward, we'll share that again because we hook into the Android lifecycle. And to unshare it, um, and once again, I give my slide up here. Unshare just takes win and fail. It actually doesn't take a message. So we'll fix that before we post the slides. Oh, thank you. Epic fail. So I jumped the shark on the demos, and, uh, and we screwed up a slide. So, the last bit was, uh, was gaming NFC style. So we wrote this game called Rock, Paper, Scissors. And um, it's really cool because you can play it with two people. Um, so if I go along and I say, hey, look, I want to select rock, and I don't tap the home screen. <laughs> Hang on. If I select rock and I don't tap the home screen, uh, and then I can play with Don. So Don selects paper. And nothing happens. Oh, I know. Fail. <laughs> oh. Just so I rewind that for a second. I think that it's uh, not sharing. Oh, no, it's not. There you go. Hey, there you go. So peer to peer is not as good as you want. Um, so he won and I lost. So. so there is a little bit of magic around some of this um, peer to peer stuff. Or there appears to be a lot of magic around the peer to peer stuff. There really isn't. Um, you could interact with a tag the same way that you would in interact with a phone. Um, but, yeah. So if you were going to actually do rock, paper, scissors, uh, instead of all the clunky up and around, it is quite easy to tap and share something. So Don, if you want to select rock, paper, scissors. Oh, you can do that. So, yay, it worked that time. So, and I got a, a win. And a, I got to win that time and I beat Don. One of the, the last thing about peer-to-peer -peer and the last thing about tags altogether is that you can open up applications from the start screen. So if I have, so if I go in and I select Rock and I really want to play with Don and I go along and tap his phone, as long as it works, it'll open up the application and then you know now you can start playing a game of rock paper scissors. Is that it? So we still have some things to do in terms of uh, getting it done. We really want to implement the uh, NFC in uh, BlackBerry OS 7. So if anyone's got a spare 9900, uh, that'd be great. If anyone's got a spare BlackBerry developer, that'd be even better. Um, we, <laughs> um, you know, it uh, would be nice to see. We heard rumors a long time ago that uh, the iPhone 5 would have NFC, but. If anyone's looked at the SDK, you might know that that's probably not likely, maybe. Um, so, you know, it's, right now it's only available on Android. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, anything else that, that anyone in, has any ideas around introducing into the, into the plugin, we're, we're all ears. Uh, I do believe that unless anyone has any questions, those are the, oh, yep. Andre? Was it a challenge to be more responsive? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I. So the question was, is it constantly sharing, or does it turn off once you start sharing? Um, it is sharing right now, all the time. As soon as I hit share tag, that's enabled and can be read. Um, if it goes to the background, it actually stops. So if the application goes to the background, then it'll stop sharing. Um, when it comes back, it'll start sharing again. Um, and it, once it's read, no, it stays on, but I mean, you could actually implement that in the JavaScript. Say, hey, once I've read that tag, just call NFC dot unshare tag and you're done. Oh, good point. No. 
So I just lied to you on videotape. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah, so it looked like the two phones were actually working together, but it was completely separate. When you share the tag, um, it, it just starts publishing, it starts publishing the tag, and then it just reads for a tag. You can actually, instead of playing against another phone, you can write something to a tag and just play against a tag. And each phone on its own is determining which is the winner based on the rules. Um, so, and that's why we had some of those timing issues where we are ignoring the event and listening to the event based on which, if the button's pressed in the UI and stuff like that. So. No. Correct. Yeah. So with the uh, NFC, there's with the tags you can read and write, and with peer to peer, you can basically publish. And when you're reading, for all intents and purposes, it's just like reading from another tag. Any other questions? Um, yeah, the manufacturers, when they sell the tags, they have a number of cycles and stuff like that that you're supposed to be able to write to them. Um, we haven't run into any limitations. I think we had one that said 100 times, but we've written to it a lot more than that. Um, don't really have a lot of experience of when they'll start to fail. So. Any other questions? All right. If you guys want to uh, check any of this stuff out and you know scan tags, write to tags, whatever, feel free to come on over and talk to us after, Tiff. So, thanks. Okay.